Toll Road here, and I'm in Holland, not Europe, Michigan. Windmill Gardens. We've got fake tulips. I missed the tulip season by a little bit. But we're going to have some fun here, so you better buckle up. Wooden coggers, because you're about ready to take a ride on the toll road. And one of the first places I visited was Tunnel Park. Now, one thing about getting to the lake, there's big sand dunes in your way. Well, Tunnel Park shoots you right through. Great view of Lake Michigan. And one of the things I love about the Great Lakes and Lake Michigan here is that you kind of feel like you're at the ocean there. You can't see any land across there. You got your sandy beaches. And unlike a lot of beaches on the Atlantic and Pacific, no one's here at this particular time. One of the more iconic spots in Holland is the Holland Harbor Lighthouse, affectionately known as Big Red. Right, found my new yacht, the Lady Arlington. Going out through the piers into Lake Michigan. Let me try not to get hooked by these fishermen when I go out here. Have any luck today? That's pretty cool. You walk out here on the pier, waves crashing on both sides of you. Boats going by. Good view of the coastline. And the lighthouse right there. And when I fall in, hey, someone will rescue me, right? Give you a look about how long that is out there. Not a bad little walk, they say. During storms, don't go out there. The waves can crash right over those big rocks. My next stop is a must if you're in the area. The Windmill Island Gardens. Alright, you're rolling now. Ah, is it me? Holland, oh, I have arrived. And a wooden shoe. Yeah. Okay, here's the famous man. Am I going to pronounce this correctly? Heck no. Dijon Windmill. 1961 Castle Park Resort owner Carter P. Brown proposed the idea of creating a public park with an authentic Dutch windmill. June 64, he traveled to New Zealand to find a suitable mill and finally arrangements to buy and moved it. So this was moved all the way from the Netherlands to here. And the swan means the swan in Dutch. Wow, that's pretty cool. Let's go take a closer look. And here's how they got materials up to the upper floors. Each floor will give you a description of how it fit into the flour milling process. On the second floor, they sifted out the bran from the flour before it was ready for packaging. And we'll make our way up to the third floor, up these creaky steps. And this area here was used for storage.
And I'm going to have to admit they keep a pretty tidy toolbox up here. These blades are 80 feet long, have a width of 8 feet, and they weigh a combined 6,600 pounds. So what the lady here was telling me, they can actually move this with a capstan. They got it chained down now. But if they get a wind, they only need about 10 to 12 mile power wind. Hey, geez. 10 to 12 mile per hour wind and it'll turn this even without the sails on it this will turn okay here's the capsule she's talking about said this really isn't that tough to turn but you turn this turn this around and you can spin this all the way over to the other side you got to catch the wind but the tough part like i said is it's these heavy chains they got wrapped around what a cool setup. This is what we saw from below. All right, every time you think you reach the top, there's another set of creaky stairs that take you up to yet another level. Now, this is a pretty important level, though. This is where them turning windmills go to work, spinning the grindstone, and you're grinding up your wheat turn it into useful flour and whatnot. Time all of these gardens here. Bowl of tulips. Okay, we're gonna make our way across this beautiful bridge here, get to the other part of Windmill Island. A few other cool things I think I need to show you before we move on to another area. Holland, Michigan. Now at quarter after the hour and quarter till the hour, I will play a tune on this for any visitors here. And I'm pretty good. I'm pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Some tulips, these are all wood carvings. Pretty cool. I'm gonna check out the big one here. Get a little further away from the uh, lawnmower there. Always in bloom. You 
gotta love it. Look at this, right next to the pond, they turned this old dead tree into a chair. In one of their buildings, they had this attraction that was very popular in its day, and well, still popular today. A model of a little Dutch village. Imagine yourself here with a can of paint, or maybe your finger in a dike, saving them from a flood. I was unable to find an authentic Dutch oven though. And of course for the kids, carousel rides. Or maybe for some adults as well. Again, I missed tulip season, but I did find a couple of flowers anyways. Don't know what kind they are, but hey, we'll just call them tulips. L. Frank Baum was known to have a summer cottage in Holland, Michigan area, and it is thought that perhaps, and maybe even probable, that this is where he penned his famous work, The Wizard of Oz. And a library near downtown Holland has dedicated statues to some of the more famous characters from that work. I hear it doesn't even look like he has a brain, does he? Hello, fly. Pretty scary lion, isn't it? You know how you can tell when a lion isn't that scary? He's got a bow on his tail. Put him up, put him up. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore. Oh, I know. This is Michigan, dummy. And he's on one knee looking like he's actually panhandling for some WD-40. If I had any, I'd probably give him a squirt. Now, these are the characters from The Wizard of Oz that I think probably gave most of the kids nightmares. Winged monkeys with attitudes and... Trees with bad breath and bad attitudes as well. I'll get you, my pretty. <laughs> and this will be our final stop in Holland. This is a spot where you can get some authentic wooden clogs, which we all need. Now, I know you probably love your Crocs clogs. Okay. You can go ahead and love them. But what if you actually needed protection from snow, mud, manure, and water? I'll take the original Dutch wooden clogs. Thank you very much. Plus, the wooden clogs look better. Must be the shoe delivery truck. And what better way to make shoe deliveries and get quality exercise? Because I'm sure this box full of wooden clogs was pretty heavy. Than this bicycle built for one. And while here we are actually getting a demonstration. Done by a professional on how to make some wooden clogs. Is there any questions starting out? So are all the shoes made of poplar or is that just one you start out with you said? We like to use poplar because it's a cheaper one on like uh, mahogany, some of the oaks and all that. And it's a soft wood, so it's easy for the knives to carve. Okay. But ultimately, you could basically make it out of whatever material you want. Okay. Nice. All right, I'm going to shut this. I'm the only one that gets hit. <laughs> if Eddie goes home and he has to do this with his beard, what do you think? <laughs>
And when it's all said and done, it's supposed to look like this. <laughs> this one, it looks like, but unfortunately, it did not spin properly, so you got part right, part wrong. Right. So that would be like a defective shoe? Yeah. But you can still look at this nice, pretty one and everything else. If you want, you can pass it around and feel the moisture that's still in there. We like to carve when there's um, still some moisture left in there because it normally cur cuts easier. It's easier on the blades and everything else. <laughs> Here's this you can pass it around. From here we normally try and let it sit for at least three months so it can dry out completely. That's gonna go that for the toll road here in Holland, Michigan. And um, who knows, who knows where the toll road will lead to next.